Hi everyone. So for today, we will be working on the cash problem set. In this problem set, we want to know, for any given amount of change owed, what is the least number of coins that we can give? So in this case, the coins that we would have would be quarters, which are 25 cents each, dimes, which are 10 cents each, nickels, which are 5 cents each, and pennies, which are 1 cent each. So usually when we are looking to give someone change, how do we usually calculate the number of coins per denomination to give? So in this example, we will use 41 cents as the amount of change owed. So this is something that many of us do almost every other day, but for this problem set, we will actually need to break down the logic and steps as to how we calculate change. So firstly, when you see that 41 cents is more than 25 cents, that means that we can actually issue a quarter. So we will issue a quarter and to find a balance, we will take 41 cents minus 25 cents and that will give us 16 cents. And since the balance of 16 cents is less than 25 cents, this means that we cannot issue any more quarters. So now we will move on to the next denomination to give, which is dimes. So since 16 cents is greater than 10 cents, we would be able to issue a dime. And then the balance would be taken to be 16 cents minus 10 cents. So that would give you the balance of 6 cents. And since 6 cents is less than 10 cents, we cannot issue any more dimes and we'll move on to issuing a nickel, which is 5 cents each. So likewise, we will take 6 cents minus 5 cents, where we issue 1 dime and 1 penny. So in total, you can see that the total number of coins that we would give is 4. So this is exactly what our code will need to show, that for any amount of change key in, we need to calculate what is the least number of coins that we need to give. So before we dive in, let's take an overview of what needs to be done and what will be the structure of our code. Firstly, the code must prompt the user for input. And secondly, we will need to find out how many quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies are needed. So let's work on the first part, which is to prompt the user for an input. So the user will be prompted to key in the amount of change owed. So as we all know, change can either be a whole number or a decimal. So as such, we actually need to ask the user for a float. And the number key in must be greater than or equals to zero. So this means there must be a validation rule in place where if the user keys in a number that is less than zero, the system will reject this input and keep prompting the user for another input. Now, we will take a pause here to reinforce what we have learned in the lecture, and that is about floating point imprecision. So in C, when we key in a decimal such as 0.43, you will never get the exact number 0.43. Instead, you will get something like 0 0.43000715. So this can and would eventually affect your calculation somewhere down the line because of all the possible decimal numbers at the back. So to work around this, what happens is that whenever we key in a float, we should convert this into an integer. So for this case, we will actually need to convert the amount of change owed that is keyed in into cents instead. So if the user keyed in 0 0.41, we will actually need to convert this into 41 cents. Okay, so now let's put this into C. We will start with the usual headers. So that would be include CS50, include standard IO, and include math. Then we will have our usual headers int main void. And now what I'm going to do is just going to comment on what this section will do, which is to get the user to input the amount of change due. And we can expect a float amount, which I will call dollars. And what I want to do is that we will have dollars equals to get float. So we will get the float from the user to key in. And they will key in amount of change due. And all this will happen while dollars is less than zero. So what this means is that as long as the user keys in on any dollar amount which is less than zero, this whole rule will keep prompting the user for amount of change due. So now I will convert the dollars to cents where I will say that there's going to be an integer called cents. And this will be done by taking a roundup of the amount of dollars owed times 100. Yep, and there you go. And that's all you need for the first step. We have just written our code to prompt for the amount of change owed and converted this float into an integer. So next, we will actually need to find out how many quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies are needed. So before we jump into the code for that, we need to talk about the logic because that's how we will write our code. So how do we calculate change? So this is what we did earlier on, but let's break this down into even smaller steps. So we'll take the example of change owed being 68 cents. What would be the least number of coins that we need to give? So let's put the steps into a table so that it's easier to view the logic behind this. 
So we start with 68 cents being the change code. And since 68 is greater than 25 cents, we can actually issue a quarter. So now the denomination that we are working with will be a quarter. And we've actually added one coin to the number of coins to give back to the customer. So after that we issue a quarter, what is the balance change owed? It will be taken as 68 cents minus 25 cents for the quarter given. And the balance is 43 cents. So on to the next row, based on 43 cents left. As 43 is still greater than 25 cents, we can actually issue another quarter. So we add one more coin to our stash. And now the balance change that we need to work with is 43 minus 25, which gives you 18 cents. So based on the balance change owed being 18 cents, 18 is actually less than 25, so we cannot issue any more quarters. We need to move on to the next denomination, which is a dime. So as 18 is more than 10, we can actually issue a dime. So now we have added another coin to our stash. And now the balance change that we need to work with is 18 minus 10 cents, which gives you 8 cents. So likewise, as 8 is now less than 10, we cannot issue any more dimes. But since 8 is greater than 5, we can now issue a nickel. And again, we add one more coin to our stash. And the balance change that we need to work with is 8 minus 5, which gives you 3 cents left. So again, as 3 is less than 5, we cannot issue any more nickels. But since 3 is greater than 1, we can actually issue a penny. So we'll just do this a few more times until we issue 2 more pennies. Right? Until the balance is 0. So with that, that means we've actually issued all the coins needed to make up the change code. So the total would be 7 coins. So now we need to put this whole step into a code. And sometimes it's easier said than done. So let's break this down a little more. So what I want to highlight is that can you see that for every new row, the amount of change owed is the balance of the preceding row. Okay? So the balance change owed at the end of every row becomes my new balance at the start of every row. Okay? So now we're going to simplify the logic of each row. Okay, as long as the balance amount of change owed is greater than the denomination you're working with, we issue the coin, right? So likewise, again, as long as the balance, which is 43, is greater than 25, we issue a quarter. So now, our new balance is 18, and since it's less than 25, but greater than 10, we can issue a dime. So we'll just apply this to the rest of the steps. As you can see, I have just standardized the change old at the start of every row and called it balance. Okay, and now let's put this into code. In this case, what I'm going to do is that instead of using the term balance, I'm going to use the term cent. Okay, so now the amount of change old at the start of every row will be called cent. So as long as this cent is more than 25, we will issue a quarter. And then... What happens is that the balance change owed, which is cent minus 25, will become the new balance of my next row to work with. And I'll just call this cent, right? And as long as it is still greater than 25, I can issue a quarter. So moving on to the next row, since cent is greater than 10, I will issue a dime. Okay, and I'll convert the rest of this. So can you see that for every row, the first formula it goes through is that as long as cent is more than 25, it will process through. And the moment it does not fulfill the condition of being more than or equals to 25, it moves on to the next formula, which is where cent is more than or equals to 10, which represents my dime. And when the balance no longer meets the criteria of cent being more than 10, it moves on to the next formula, which is cent being more than or equals to 5. And when the balance is now less than 5, we move on to the next formula, which is cent is more than or greater than 1. Okay? So now let's put this all together in code. So what happens is that I'm going to first define that we are going to start counting from zero, right? That will be the number of coins that we have. So there will be an integer called count and we will start from zero. So now just to comment on what this section is about, where as long as change is more than 25, this is where we issue our quarters. So we're going to put in what we found out just now, which is while cent is more than or equals to 25, so that is the rule, as long as that is the case, we will have cent equals to cent minus 25 and the count will plus 1. Okay, so then next, moving on to the next session which is to issue our nickels, as long as the change O is more than 10 cents, right? So we will convert it into while well, cent is more than or equals to 10, we are going to say cent which is the balance of your new row 
equals to cent minus 10. And what we're going to do is that we're going to add to the count of total coins. So we repeat this for the number of nickels owed, which is as long as the change owed now is more than 5 cents. Likewise, we're going to write down the same formula, just that we're going to define the denomination that we're working with now, which is nickels. Right? And next, for the last one, we're going to do is that as long as the change owed is more than 1 cent, we are going to issue a penny. Right? So as long as it's more than 1 cent, we will add to the stash of 1. And this command will loop until the balance cent left is 0. Okay? So just to wrap it all together, now what I want the system to do is to print the integer that we have, which would refer to the number of coins that we have at the end of running this whole loop until the balance is 0. So that would be the count that we need to print. Okay, so now let's try to make this work. Make cash and oops, I see an error. Let's go up and rectify it. I forgot this one here. Okay, let's try again. Make cash. Okay, it works. Now let's test it out. Okay, right and good. So now let's try the different scenarios that it gave. Okay, and as you can see, as long as we key in anything other than a number that is greater than or equals to zero, the system rejected it. And when we key in a decimal, it threw out the number of coins needed very nicely. And there you go. So if you found this video helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you just give this video a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to my channel. That would be most helpful for the algorithm in bumping this video up so that other people who might be looking for a similar explanation to understanding this problem set will come across this video and hopefully all of you will find it useful. Thank you.